Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome home to Discovery Church. I'm glad you join us here in the auditorium, the coffee venue, online, wherever you happen to be. Maybe you're listening to the rebroadcast. We're glad you're here. We're glad you joined us. Welcome home. And uh, we're going to continue our teaching ser series called By Faith. Uh, it's a look at uh, Hebrews chapter 11, uh, often called uh, the chapter of faith. So uh, we're glad you joined us for that. And uh, Mike Baker brought us the first part, and uh, he showed us uh, part in part one that, that faith brings with it a, a confident um, expectation. And last week, Pastor Tim brought brought part two and showed us through the life of Abel that obedience condemns disobedience. And today uh, is part three, and our main idea today is very simple. It's it, You'll see it all through all through the uh, chapter 11, and uh, actually it's all through the New Testament, but our faith requires action. Our faith requires action. That's the main idea today. And Hebrews, <clears throat> the book of Hebrews can be broadly broken down into three sections. Uh, chapters 1 through 6 show us that Jesus is a superior person. And uh, chapter 7 through 10 uh, show us that Jesus is a superior priest, or as, as scripture, as he, as, as he called in, in those chapters, the high priest, the great high priest. So, and then chapters 11 through 13 are, show us and, and testify to us that we can have a superior life, and that is a life of faith. And so what we're going to do is continue today. Uh, in, in that life of faith. And I'm going to look at uh, verses 5 and 6 in Hebrews chapter 11. In, in verses 5 and 6, it says, It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. And now there's a, there's a few things in these verses that, that kind of like grabbed my attention. And, and I just want to drill down on them just a little bit today. Uh, first of all, we see the phrase, it was by faith. It was by faith that Enoch was was taken up without dying and that God took him. He disappeared. It was by faith that that happened. And, and we see that phrase in chapter 11 of Hebrews. We see it over and over and over again. It was by faith. It was by faith. It was by faith. And what the writer, writer is doing here is he's giving us a roll call of the heroes of Scripture. And he's, the, chapter 11 has been called the Hall of Faith or the Roll Call of Faith in chapter 11 because the writer takes, takes us from, from Genesis all the way through Scripture and points out these, these people that had great faith uh, in, that, that were in Scripture. And these guys, that he's, these people that he's writing about, these are the, the heavy hitters of Scripture. They're the long ball hitters. Those, those are the go-to guys and gals that he writes about because they are the heroes of the faith, and he talks about how they lived their faith. So if he's going to use those as an example of how we should live in practice and, and discipline our lives for the faith, then we should at least have an idea of what biblical faith looks like because that is, that is our goal there. Now, the, the Greek work, word for, for uh, faith is pistis. Pistis is the, is the word, and it means to, to trust in or to believe in. And, and the, verb, the verb form of that word is trusting in or believing in, and it has an emphasis on what or who you are trusting in. It puts the emphasis on that. And when we're talking <laughs> biblical faith, we are talking faith and trust in God. Enoch had faith in God and uh, who God is. He had faith that God was able to keep his promises. He had trust in, in God that God rewarded those who seek him. And uh, that was the life that Enoch lived. That was the life that he lived in the way that he walked. 
There's not much about Enoch in Scripture. There's really not. There's, a, there's one verse in Jude, one verse in Luke, and there's a couple in Genesis and then here in Hebrews. And none, and none of them really go into any kind of a detail. In fact, I want to look at uh, uh, chapter 5 of Genesis, uh, verse 24 or 22. And that's the verse, those are the verses that the writer of Hebrews is, is drawing from when he writes in Hebrews. So look at chapter 5. Five of Genesis, verse 21. We'll start with verse 21. It says, When Enoch was 65 years old, he became the father of Methuselah. And, uh, you know, just, just as, as a little side note here, the next verse, or verse 25, talks about Methuselah and how he lived 969 years. And um, that's been called the, the saddest verse in the Bible because he's the oldest person in, listed in Scripture, 969 years old, and his whole life is summed up, and he died. And uh, So that Enoch is not like that, and we're going to see that. But he was the father of Methuselah. After the birth of Methuselah, Enoch lived in close fellowship with God for another 300 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Enoch lived 365 years walking in close fellowship with God. Then one day he disappeared because God took him. And, and what, what, what we see here is he lived in close fellowship with God, again in verse 24, walking in close fellowship with God. And what that, that's just another way of saying that's how he lived. That was his life. His life was a life of faith. He lived his, he lived his faith. In, in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, Paul echoes that thought when he says we walk by faith and not by sight. It's, it's the same idea. It means that's how we live. And Enoch had a faith that he lived out. He put his faith into action. And living out our faith and living by our faith is a form of worship of God. And, and, and so when we live our lives and we say we have faith, then our faith requires action. And then back to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, looking, looking at, back at, at verse 5, we see that Enoch was taken to heaven without dying. It says he disappeared because God took him. Now, this disappeared, it isn't like um, uh, kids... You're looking for kids' shoes. You're getting ready to go someplace. And um, you, you say, okay, go get your shoes on. And you come back 10 minutes later, and they're sitting there in their stocking feet because they don't have their shoes. And you're like, well, where are your shoes at? When my boys were little, uh, my oldest one, his favorite f phrase was, well, I, they just disappeared. Yeah, yeah, really? You little knucklehead? Shoes don't disappear. Go find them. That kind of a thing. But that, see, that's not what this disappeared is. This disappeared has a, carries an idea with it that, that it's something that isn't there that was diligently searched for. So people looked for Enoch. They were searching for him. He wasn't there, and they're like, where'd he go? And they're, you know, it's not like you, you just holler out one time and then go, oh, I guess he's not around. No, they were looking for him, and they couldn't find him. He disappeared because God had taken him to heaven before he died. It's a picture of the rapture of the church upon the return of Jesus Christ is what that is. It's a picture of the rapture. In fact, 1 Thessalonians 4.16, uh, Paul writes, and he says, you know, the, the Lord will come with, with, with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel and, the, and, and, and a blast of the trumpet call of the Lord, and those that were dead will be raised first and, uh, from their grave and, and go into heaven. And then he says in verse 17, then together with them, those that were, that were raised up, together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. And that is worth an amen. amen. That is worth it. Because, you know, a lot of times people say, well, you know, uh, death is something that we all have to experience. I don't think so. Apparently not, according to Paul. So, so you know, but, but we're going to be called up if we're still alive. And if we're not, well, hey, guess what? We get to be the first. So it, it's a win-win situation in my eyes, you know. But, but that's what he's talking. That's, that's a picture of Enoch. He, he just disappeared. 
and, and they looked for him and they couldn't find him. And I remember the other week when we had the, uh, during Love Week, we had the dental bus here. And I was talking with a guy, uh, the, one of the patients there, and he was complaining about, you know, the, the world's messed up, the federal government's messed up, the state, the county, you know, everybody's messed up, all messed up. I said, I didn't get that, man. I get it. It's all messed up. I said, but you know what? I've read the book. I know how it ends. Can I tell you how it ends? So you don't have to worry about it being messed up. It is what it is. So, and, and we had this really good conversation about the gospel. And, and I felt so blessed. And, and I was amazed, you know, because I'm, I don't know why I am, but, but I just, I get caught, caught off guard sometimes when, when God just, you know, drops one of those opportunities in your lap. And I'm like, wow, okay got it but anyways we i had that conversation with him and so so that's what we see we see enoch is just going up because why because of his faith because of his faith and it's by faith his faith in that day that only only god can bring about his faith in that day that's how he walked and he walked in that faith for 365 years 365 years now now i'm going to be 63 in september and i'm telling you i've got aches and pains in places that i didn't know i had my body creaks and cracks and sounds like a a, a bowl of rice crispy sometimes when i get up in the morning i can't imagine what it would be like at 365 years you know that, that's crazy that's absolutely crazy. And, and yeah, one of the things is a lot of people these days, especially the young people, they're all about these selfies and taking pictures. And, and, and I told the, the, the earlier service, I said, go ahead. If you're a young person, go ahead and take those pictures, man. Take the pictures because, you know, you laugh at me for creaking and cracking and, and hurting and act and, and, and all of that. And uh, take those pictures because I'm telling you what is firm and flat nowadays, there's coming a day and there's coming a day when what is firm and flat is going to start flopping and flying. So take the pictures now and enjoy it while you can. But he, he lived 365 years walking in faith. In Genesis, though, the, the account in Genesis doesn't say that he had faith. It said he walked in close fellowship with God. So, so how do we know that Enoch was a man of faith? How, how can we know that? And it's simple because, you know, the writer of Hebrews said it was by faith. But yet Genesis doesn't say anything about faith. It says he walked. And so how, do, how can we know? The end of verse 5 in Hebrews 11 says he was known as a person who pleased God. And then right out of the gate, in verse 6, he says, and it is impossible to please God without faith. Are you tracking with me? Are you tracking with me here? You, you cannot please God with, without faith. Enoch please, pleased God, so Enoch must have had faith. And he walked that faith. And he lived that faith. And you notice that he doesn't say that it's tricky to please God without faith. He doesn't say you have to jump through some of these hoops. You have to run this, this obstacle course without faith to please God. He doesn't say it's difficult to please God without faith. He says it is impossible, impossible to please God without faith. And Enoch, Enoch was a man like you and me. He was, he, he was a flawed person. He was imperfect. I'm imperfect. You're imperfect. Romans 20, uh, 3.23 tells us that we've all sinned and fall short of God's standard. We all do. And, and, and I have the faith that says that, that when Scripture says all, that is exactly what God means. All. There's, there's no exceptions to this rule. Well, with the exception of Jesus Christ, there's no exceptions. Amen. All have sinned. And so he was an imperfect person, but, but yet it says that he pleased God. How, how can it be that I can be imperfect and yet still please God? How can I be imperfect and still please God? It's because he had fellowship with God. And through the fellowship that he had with God, he had faith in God's forgiveness. He had faith in God's grace. He had faith in God's mercy. And because of that, he could walk in faith. Because he walked in faith, he pleased God. Because he pleased God, God took him to heaven without dying. That's how it works. 
It was by faith, all by faith. And we can have that fellowship with God as well. In fact, God wants to have that fellowship with us. He longs for that fellowship with us. And we do that. We fellowship with him through prayer, through reading his word, through meditating on his word, through worshiping him, through disciplining our lives to live a life of faith, to obey what God is telling us to do, to obey the way the Holy Spirit is leading us to live. That's how Enoch lived, and that's how he pleased God, by the actions of his faith, because our faith requires action. And then in the last half of verse 6, we're told anyone who wants to come to him, God, anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Now, when it comes to faith, our faith, we first, the very first thing we have to do is we have to believe that God exists. Nothing happens faith in faith before that. That's the very, that's the jumping off point. That is the starting point. We have to believe that God exists. In Romans 1.20 tells us that since the beginning of creation, God has shown himself to everyone through his creation who he is, his nature, his power. So they know who he is and there's no excuse to not know him. So it's, you, you, you can't go with, I didn't know because nobody told me. God has shown himself to everyone that he exists. And to have faith and believe in God means that we must have faith and believe in Jesus Christ as well because we have to remember that it is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity. They are co-equal. They are co-eternal. And so to believe in, you cannot believe in God and not believe in Jesus because they are co-equal. You, you have to take the package deal. And so to believe in God is to believe in Jesus. Paul writes in Philippians, he writes, I became righteous through faith in Christ. That's how he became righteous. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. And then again in Galatians 2.16, Paul writes, we, Yet we know that a person is made right with God by faith in Jesus Christ, not by obeying the law. And we have believed in Jesus Christ so that we might be made right with God because of our faith in Christ, not because we have obeyed the law, for no one will ever be made right with God obeying the law. Over and over and over, Paul says, we are made right by God through faith. It is our faith. It is our faith. It is who we are trusting in, who we are believing in, and what they can do. That is the faith. It's not about a formal rule-keeping thing. You don't keep rules to get faith. Your faith causes your actions, not the other way around. You don't, you don't do stuff to get faith. Because of faith, you do works. That's how it works. It's a form of worship. It's a form of fellowship with God. Faith is, is, is a life that is dependent on God. It is dependent on, on his grace and his mercy. And uh, a growth in that faith, we have to grow and mature in that faith. That, and it, that faith should not only recognize that God exists, but he also cares about us. And he's also in, involved in, in our human brokenness. That's why the word became flesh and came, it be, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, John 1, 14. I mean, he, he left heaven and he came to earth because he cares about us, because he loves us, because he wants to be involved in our lives. And to believe that God exists means that we believe in Jesus Christ. And if we believe in Jesus Christ, then we have to believe that he came to earth because he loves us and he cares about us. And that is part of our faith. It requires an action of us because that kind of faith requires us to live a life of action. And that's why the word, the word became flesh. 
belief in God, that God exists, is, is, is absolutely, absolutely essential to growing in our faith. 2 Corinthians 10, 15 tells us that. Paul says, you should be, I hope you're maturing in your faith. So our faith should be growing or maturing, and, and that requires faith in action. And, and then back, back, back in Hebrews, at the end of verse 6, he, uh, the writer ends this testimony of Enoch's life by saying God rewards those who sincerely seek him. Okay, so, so we've looked at, at faith in Jesus Christ, in his work on the cross, his death, burial, resurrection, ascension to heaven, and he did that for me and for you. Okay, that's, I believe that. That's faith in Jesus. But then our faith is to grow and to mature, and what we need to do is we need to grow and mature into the faith of Jesus. There is a difference between the faith in Jesus and the faith of Jesus and that's where I want to I want to look at. It. So we have to make sure that we have that distinction and we understand trusting Jesus died for our sins is faith in Jesus. Trusting God cares, is concerned, loves, is moving in our lives. All of that he has control and the power and the ability to to keep his promises. That is the faith of Jesus. That's where we should be going. And a lot of people, a lot of people have trouble getting there. They have trouble getting there. Because we, we say, okay, I'm going to turn it over to God, and we turn it over to God, and 10 minutes later, we're like, hey, God, let me have that back. Why? Why? Because I, I'm not sure that you're going to handle this. I'm not sure you're going to take care of this. At least I don't think you're going to do it to my liking. So just let me have it back, and, and I'll take care of it. See, that's not the faith of Jesus. Listen, listen to what Jesus said in John chapter 11. At the, he's getting ready to raise Lazarus from the dead, and they've rolled the stone away and all that. And Jesus is, is, is praying. Listen to how his prayer starts. Father, thank you for hearing me. Thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of these people standing here so that they will believe that you sent me. How many times do you start your prayers? Lord, thank you for hearing me. Thank you for taking care of what I'm about to ask you for. We start with, Lord, look, you know, I haven't talked to you in a while. Or, Lord, maybe if, 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 if it wouldn't be too much trouble, maybe you could listen to me. He wants to hear from us. That's the faith of Jesus. That's the power of prayer. And that's how Jesus started his prayer. I mean, listen, listen, there's, there, there, there's more. Listen to this in, in, in John chapter 16. I'm going to read verse 25 through 28. He's talking to his disciples. He's just about to be arrested. And um, you know what? Actually, I'm going to start up at, at verse 22. So you have sorrow now because he's going to be crucified. You have sorrow now, but I will see you again. Then you will rejoice and no one can rob you of that joy. At that time, you won't need to ask me for anything. I tell you the truth. You will ask the father directly and he will grant your request because you use my name and then verse 25 through 28 he says he says to the disciples i have spoken of these matters in figures of speech but soon i will stop speaking figurative, figuratively and will tell you plainly about the all about the father then you will ask in my name i'm not saying i will ask the father on your behalf but the father himself loves you dearly because you love me and you believe that I came from God. Look, uh, you read that chapter 16 sometime. Over and over are we here. I will, you will, we will, it will, it will, it will, it will. It's, and no, there's no evidence that it's happened. No evidence that it's happened yet. No evidence that it's going to happen. No evidence that God heard him and yet He's talking as if it has. That is the faith of Jesus. A belief that God cares. That God loves us dearly. That God is involved in our lives. That God has the ability to care for us and take care of us and protect us and provide for us. That is the faith of Jesus. 
It's like he, he wants a, a relationship so bad with us. He wants us to fellowship with him so bad. There's nothing that he won't do to get us into that fellowship. He wants to get our attention. It's like, like the song that we sing, Reckless Love. You know, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. It chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. He'll leave the 99 to come search for me, for me. No shadow you won't light up, no mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No, law you, no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. He wants a relationship and a fellowship with you so bad. There's no mountain that he won't climb, no wall he won't kick down to get to us. That is the faith of Jesus. That is the kind of faith that comes from walking in close fellowship with God. Like Jesus said in his high priestly prayer, I, I want them in me just like I am in you and you are in me. That's pretty close fellowship. And that's the faith of Jesus. It's not a passive faith. Biblical faith Biblical faith calls us to engage the gospel. Biblical faith calls us to take the gospel out to the world. It calls us to live the gospel. It calls us to obey God. And we live a life of faith that is engaged by, by baptizing, by getting baptized, by baptizing others, by serving others, by worshiping God, by living, helping others, caring about others. That is how we live. And that is the faith that Enoch had. That is the faith of Jesus. You see, a biblical faith, a biblical faith is a response to God because of his grace and his mercy to us. We believe in his faith. Our faith should be growing and maturing to a point where we can be trustworthy to God. We talk a lot about God. Oh, I trust God in the storm. I trust God in the storm. Can God trust you with the storm? Or is your faith going to crumble? And are you going to walk away? Biblical faith, faith of Enoch, faith like Jesus, that kind of faith. Discovery 
church because that is how we move closer to you. We move our faith. We move our faith closer to you because we want to have fellowship with you daily. We want that. We want that to be written about us when we are gone. Be pleased, God. Thank you, Lord, for this great week that's coming up and all you're going to do. Help us keep our eyes open.